Hi, my name is Kent Toussaint, licensed marriage and family therapist, founder and clinical director of Teen Therapy Center in Woodland Hills, California, coming to you live on Facebook to answer your parenting questions. But this week, we're doing something a little differently. Uh, I was asked to speak at the Lights for Liberty vigil at the Sherman Oaks Galleria this Friday. It is a vigil across the country, many different locations, many cities, uh, having uh, big gatherings to talk about and discuss uh, the crisis at the border uh, with uh, child and family separations and what's happening there. And I will be speaking about the potential uh, trauma and dangers that children can face emotionally uh, from the child separation. My job here is not to talk to you about politics. You can believe whatever you want to believe, Republican, Democrat, Independent. I think you should uh, believe what you want to believe and, and speak to your truth. I'm not here to try to change your mind on political parties or who to vote for. That is not what I'm here to do. I am only here to talk about the effects and the lasting effects that the policy that is in place now of the child separation can have on a child for that whole child's life and for generations to come. Um, so with that in mind and understanding that immigration policy I don't think is an easy topic to figure out. I think you know, honorable people can have honest disagreements on documented and undocumented immigration. Um, I think th that conversation they're having for a long time and there can be disagreements and there are. Um, but again, let's focus on how the current policy is affecting children. So go with me for a moment. I'm going to kind of lay out a story here. I want you to come with me. Imagine you and your family are living in a city or a country that is war-torn, that is uh, ravaged by gang violence, uh, government persecution, and you've probably witnessed this, maybe you have been a victim of it, and you've decided the best choice for you is to get out, find a better life somewhere else because staying here is untenable. So you make this trek across a country or countries, leave everything behind, risk it all to try to get to a better place. You get to the border, and because you cannot totally prove that you are the parent of these children, you are separated. Now you're put in a holding cell or holding pen, a uh, holding facility that is overcrowded, where you may or may not have a bed or a sheet. You may not even have the ability to lay down to sleep. You may have to sit up. You also have no access to hygiene. Um, and you're separate. You, don't, you have no idea how long you're going to be there. You have no idea what's going on with your kids. Uh, that's a pretty traumatic thing for anyone to go through. Now imagine you're 14 years old, or better yet, four years old. And you're four years old, you've been separated from everyone you know. You have no concept of time. So whether it's three days or three months, it's traumatic. You have no idea what's happening. You have no idea where your parents are. And what we know in psychology is so much goes on in brain development between parents and children of that connection, that closeness. Um, I talk all the time with parents and kids of really strengthening that connection. And this is, these are kids who have not been separated from their families. These are kids who maybe have gone through uh, divorce. Maybe they've gone through, maybe a parent has left the family for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's family that's intact, but they're just, they're so, um, there's so much disconnection because of, you know, fam parents need to work, they're a busy family, too many screens, and that causes damage. Now imagine it's, and in a place where your detention center where you have substandard food, even for a third world country, and substandard water, no hygiene, you're all alone, you're afraid, that causes immediate and lasting damage to any child. And I'll talk about what that is. So when babies and children are, are young, there's a lot of connection between parents and children. Through eye contact, physical con loving physical contact, that helps develop healthy brain waves so kids start understanding what is safe, and what is not safe. When there is severe trauma, like separation, that, that restructures the brain. So as that child grows to be an adult, or even a teenager, their ability to recognize what is safe and what is not safe is impaired. That is lasting, that is hardwired. That takes a lot of work to repair, and that is not an easy thing to do. So what's happening is, we are creating a situation where these children will grow up with lasting 
psychological damage. Whereas they grow up, and maybe even as adults, they are more prone to lower IQ and ability to uh, have cognitive thinking skills, um, more risk of anxiety and depression, more risk of drug and alcohol abuse, more risk of violence, more risk of sexually acting out. Uh, and these keep re-traumatizing. Every time they, a child or an adult uses these maladaptive coping skills to try to repair or figure out how, how they're doing, they re-traumatize themselves. And they'll put themselves in re-traumatizing situations. They will push away from people who are, they love and people who are safe because they don't know how to trust it. And so they'll, they'll separate and they'll feel even more alone. And so what we're happening is we're creating children who grow up to be unhealthy adults who if they have children, will pass that on to their children. So generationally, we are creating generations of children and adults who are going to be damaged, who are going to have you know, the, the shrapnel of, of this situation in their minds for generations to come. Um, and this is something that I think we need to shine a light on more and be aware that we are creating situations that is gonna come back to haunt us because these people stay in our country you know, their parents are going to not be able to get them the therapeutic treatment they need because the parents are probably working two to four jobs just to make ends meet and they're not spending enough time with their kids because they're doing everything they can to just put food on the table and pay the rent. If they go back to the countries they came from, well, how much therapy is there? How much access, long-term, stable therapy are these children going to have access to? My guess is very, very little. So I think it's important that we, as a country, take care of the most vulnerable, whether they're citizens or not. We have to find a better way to deal with this, uh, this crisis of immigration. Um, for example, here, here's a quote I wanna to read to you. Many of you will recognize this. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Those of you who don't know what this is, this is the quote at the base of the Statue of Liberty. We were built on bringing people who are vulnerable and giving them a place to rise up. I'm not saying we have to let everyone in the country. I don't know how to handle that situation. I'm not saying I do. But should we treat them as farm animals or better or pack or just animals that that have no value? You know, these people are people, whether they deserve to be in this country or not, again, is a different debate. And I don't want to debate that here. That's not what we're here for. Our debate here is to figure out how do we help these people who are here now? There must be a, a more practical, humane way to deal with this. You know, we are America. We are the land of the free and home of the brave. How much of free are we really, really, are we sharing with the people trying to get in this country? And how brave is this policy that we are damaging and hurting on purpose these children who to no fault of their own have been brought here? Now you may say, well, their parents should have brought them here. And I understand that argument, but they're here. So we have to find a better way to deal with them. Um, again, we can talk about this for hours and hours and we will have a big conversation about this on Friday at seven o'clock at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Please come, please bring donations, um, whether it's, you know, toiletries, unopened toiletries, socks, clothes, easily opened canned goods. Uh, please bring your donations. Uh, I think this is a really important uh, humanitarian cause that I think we can all get behind regardless of political party, regardless of conservative, liberal, moderate, whatever you, how you see yourself. I think we want to help people. And so I hope you can too. So please join me this Friday at 7 p.m. at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. If you have more questions, please give me a call or just email us here. Um, next week, we'll be back to our regular uh, parenting questions where I answer your parenting questions. And if you have a question, please email us at tipsonteens at teentherapycenter.com or just direct messages right here on Facebook. Thanks again, and I'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.